Hello and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we'll be dealing with cyclotrons. By definition, a cyclotron is a device used to accelerate charged particles to a higher freak to a higher energy without high voltage. Okay, a device used to accelerate charged particles to a higher energy without high voltage. All right. So here's what to note, please. That's your definition. Now, here's what to note. For a cyclotron, the magnetic field force or the magnetic force needed for any of the circular path is provided by the centripetal force. So, hence, it means that for a cyclotron, your first note is this, that magnetic force is equal to centripetal force. So, note that for cyclotron, magnetic force, let's call this F magnetic is equal to centripetal force so f centripetal so i have this the magnetic force is equal to centripetal force um from what we've done in our class on magnetic force all right so record that from our previous class we said magnetic force let's say fm in this case is equal to the product of charge and velocity and magnetic field we have this also, centripetal force is equal to mass times velocity squared all over radius of curvature. So we have, these are two um, formulas we've dealt with in our previous class. Um, if you have to equate these two, it means that QVB is equal to MV squared all over R. Let's, let's um, since you have V on both sides, they can cancel out. So this velocity will cancel this one here. I'm left with one of this. So this was two. I'm left with one of this. So it means that QB is equal to MV over R. So I'm having MV all over R. So I have this. In this case, let's make V, that's velocity, to be subject of the formula. If I do this over one, it becomes this times this. MV times one is MV is equal to this times this becomes charge times magnetic field times radius of curvature all over divide here by m divide here by m so this cancels this it means that velocity v is equal to q b r all over m so i have this one here and there is mass of the particle so i have this now recall something Record that we have a relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity. What well, we said, linear velocity V is equal to angular velocity, this, that's omega, times R. So I'm having this one here. If I substitute this into this question here, it means that, let me, let me, let me put the value of V as this in this, question, in this equation here. To so replace V by this, it means that omega R is equal to Q B R all over what there? All over M. So I have this. From here, these two can cancel out this and this. So it means that omega there is equal to Q B all over M. So we have this one here. Don't forget we said this one means angular velocity. So this is angular velocity. Uh, just for the notes, this is equal to angular velocity that's angular velocity all right um also recall in terms of frequency we said angular velocity is equal to 2 pi f in terms of frequency all right so let me replace the value of angular velocity here by 2 pi f replace this by this you have that 2 pi f is equal to what I have here, Q, B, all over M. So I have this. Let's get F. We can say to get F, multiply this by 1. If I multiply this one here by 1 over 2 pi, okay? You can say divide both sides by 1 over 2 pi. Or in another mathematical sense, we said multiply this by 1 all over 2 pi. Multiply this by 1 all over 2 pi such that this will cancel this 1 times f is f so that means the frequency is equal to qb times 1 is qb all over 2 pi times m is 
2 pi n. This becomes the frequency of the cyclotron. Also, sometimes you'll be asked to find period. All right? So, period of period of cyclotron. We said period T is equal to the inverse of frequency. So that would now be equal to, we are saying that T is equal to 1 all over frequency. Is this, that's um, QB all over 2 pi M. I have this. So, we have that T period is equal to inverse. This. this one goes to the numerator. It becomes 2 pi M all over QB. I have this as the period of a cyclotron. All right, one final thing before this. One final thing. Let's look at kinetic energy. Uh, but before then, let's see if we can define these parameters. Um, we said this is angular velocity. All right. We said this one here is period. We said this one here is frequency. So here's my formula for frequency. Here's for period. And what have you. So let's define parameters, please. Um, note, note this, note this please, number one, um, for this please, note this please, number one, we said M stands for mass, so one is mass, the value of the mass differs, um, let's see mass, let's see for the first case, I, one I, if the mass is a proton, if the mass is a proton, for a proton, the mass is 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 27 kilogram. That's the mass of a proton. If the mass is an electron, if the mass is an electron, the value will be 9 9.11 times 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram. That's for an electron. For a neutron, for a neutron, the mass of a neutron is equal to the mass of a proton. So I'm saying mass of neutron is equal to 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 27. So I have this. Uh, what other parameter there? Q. But so Q is equal to charge. That's charge. Number three, M is equal to mass of particle. Mass, okay? Mass of particle, of course. As you said here, mass of particle, obviously in kilogram. What else? B, number four, B is equal to magnetic field. So, magnetic field in what? Eh? Tesla T. So, I have this. All right. So, this is all about uh, some of the things you should note. We look at the kinetic energy. So, if the body is um, being accelerated, it has to move with a kinetic energy. Let's look at the formula for getting kinetic energy and then we'll solve problems on cyclotron. Right, so look, let's look at kinetic energy. Um, so we have that kinetic energy of the particle here. That's Ke. So we said Ke, as we know, kinetic energy, that's Ke, is equal to half times mass times velocity squared. If I look at this equation here, from here, if I make M to be subject of the formula here, that means these two will exchange position. From here, this becomes M, and V goes here, I'll have V here. So I'll have this one here. If I replace this value into this equation, I'll have that K is equal to half times M. M is Q B R all over V. So half M next of V squared becomes V squared. Please. This value of m is from this equation, which I made m subject of the formula. So I had this, and then we are here. From here, obviously, v here 1, v here v. So I have this. Okay? So this is now equal to half. I have um, q 
qbr dot v i have this uh but from where all right so from here i have half q qbr dot v but but if i look at this equation here we said v is equal to what there qbr over m that's um q b r all over m all right so if that's true replace this value here what do we get so if i place that i have that kinetic energy ke is equal to half times q b r times v what's v there v is q b r all over m that's the value of v here q b r over m so the kinetic energy ke is equal to half into q times q is q squared dot b times b is b squared dot r times r is r squared all over m if i multiply these i'll have that kinetic energy is equal to one times numerator gives you q squared b squared r squared all over two times n is 2m so i have this all right of course this one here the s sign of this one here of the kinetic energy obviously is in joules or electron volts or ev ev is called electron volts the relationship between electron volts and joules is that one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules so that's your relationship all right all right so in case you're asked to find kinetic energy in terms of either electron volts or in joules you can use this relationship to get them all right so this is all about cyclotrons we'll take some examples on cyclotrons and then we proceed but for this please note the most important formulas are that the frequency of a cyclotron this is like one of the most important formula there here's your frequency um, also note that the period this, this is your second important formula there period of um, a cyclotron is this one here then finally this one here number three note your kinetic energy note that ke is equal to this so i've tried to do the derivation for each of them so these are your like your three formulas to note uh, we've defined all of these parameters except r please r is simply radius so r is radius uh, where do i write down here so r is simply radius and of course radius measured in meters all right so that's about this one here let's take some questions and solve this all right so let's take a um, sample problem on cyclotron this question says a cyclotron for accelerating protons has a magnetic field of 1.5 tesla and a maximum radius of 0.5 meters a what is the cyclotron frequency b find the kinetic energy of the protons as they emerge all right so solution there let's get this done the solution there um first things first number one i'm given i'm giving the magnetic field b as equal to 1.5 tesla also they gave me about two radius um r as being 0.5 meter so we have this all right the a part says you find cyclotron frequency so a parts let's find frequency or cyclotron frequency so if you check earlier we said frequency formula f is equal to q b all over 2 pi m so 2 pi times m so we have this oh we said m is what there mass so i'm having mass 
for this case here, we're not given the value of the mass, but we're told the set for proton. And I gave you a value for the mass of the proton before now. I said for proton, the mass is 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 27 kilogram. That's the mass of a proton. So I have this. All right. So we have to find the cyclotron frequency. We have all of this. So what's missing now is now Q. So Q is equal to charge of an electron 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. Now observe that I didn't use the negative 1.6. And the idea is that frequency is not a negative um, concept. Frequency has to be positive. All right, it's not negative. So I'm, I'll ignore the minus and just use the positive value. That means the, fre the cyclotron frequency F is equal to Q, that's 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19. Q times B, magnetic field 1.5 Tesla. So QB all over 2. So 2 times pi pi times M. M is mass of the proton 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 27. Please, we are using mass of a proton because proton was what was mentioned in the question. So we have this. All right, so let's get this done. Let's punch this. So for numerator, what do I have there? I have um, 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 times 1.5. That's about 24 times 10 to power minus 20 all over 2 times pi times 1.67 times 10 to power minus 27 that's about 104.93 times 10 to power minus 28 so I have this so the frequency hence is equal to if i divide this to what do i get there i get 24 times 10 to the power minus 20 divided by 104.93 times 10 to the power minus 28 that's about uh, the frequency value f is about 2287 Two three nine one point one two frequency is in hertz, so hertz. I have this. Uh, let's let's convert this one here. Let's let's from here. One two three. That's kilo. Four five six. That's mega. So that will be here. Twenty two point eight seven. So from here I'm having one two three four five six. So this becomes this six is mega hertz. So this is how we convert this. We come to the 2.87 megahertz. So that is the um, frequency. That's the first part. The B part said we should calculate for what there? Kinetic energy of the protons. So kinetic energy. Let's get kinetic energy. So we said Ke. The formula is equal to, we said half, half Q squared, B squared, R squared, all over M. So we had this. Okay. So that's equal to, uh, let's impute values. Q is 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 q squared times b b is 1.5 so 1.5 squared times r r is 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 all squared q squared b squared r squared all over 2 times m so 2 times the mass m for a proton this 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 27. Alright, so let's work on this. What do you get? So this is equal to let's get numerator. 
numerator is um, 1.67 times 1.6 1 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 all squared all squared times 1.5 squared times 0 0.5 squared so this that is about 144 times 10 to the power minus 40 all over 2 times 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 27 that's 33.4 times 10 to the power minus 28 all right so hence the kinetic energy is equal to 144 times 10 to the power minus 40 all over 33.4 times 10 to the power minus 28 that's about 4.3 4.31 times 10 to the power minus 12. This one is in joules. So this is the value in joules. Uh, you can this um, 10 to the power minus 12 is pico. That's equal to 4.31 pico joules. So pico is 10 to the power minus 12. So I have pico joules. Let's give this answer in electric in electron volts. Let's, just, let's, let's give this answer in electron volts. So what do we do? Alright, so to get this in electron volts, we we'll simply need to divide this one by 1 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19. That means Ke, kinetic energy in electron volts, is simply 4.31 times 10 to the power minus 12 all over 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 so this is how you convert to electron volts so this is equal to if i divide this i have um two six two six nine three seven five zero zero seven five zero zero electron volts so i have this as my answer in electron volts all right so we have this one here um, observe the way observe the way I write electron volts so observe that for my electron volts for my electron volts my E is small and the V is bigger so that's how you write electron volts um, can we present this answer in terms of a beta index let's say in terms of mega from here I'm having from here move 1, 2, 3 so this is kilo 4, 5, 6 this is mega becomes 26.9 mega electron volts so i think that's a better um representation so if i convert this becomes 26.9 26.94 i think that was the value that was 937 it becomes 94 approximately mega electron volts again notice the way i write electron volts small e bigger v so this is the answer after solving that question so this is how we get the frequency and the kinetic energy of the cyclotron both in joules and in electron volts so this is how we solve this question